Happy New Year, Bowtie Nation. Joseph Hogue here. Thank you for joining us for another Monday Market Update, 9 a.m. Eastern, every Monday morning, this week on Tuesday because of the market closure yesterday, but giving you all the updates on stocks that you need to see, stock market news, stocks I'm watching this week. Stocks in the S&P 500 were up 24% last year, clearly in a bull market, but is there something that we're not seeing? In fact, the stock market might not be quite as healthy as we think. That's because just seven stocks, the magnificent seven, accounted for nearly all the return on the broader market last year. The top seven stocks by company size, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, Nvidia, Alphabet, and Meta surged to over 80% higher, while the rest of the market, the remaining 493 companies, returned to just 12% for the year. So I'm gonna detail why the Magnificent Seven are so hot, why they jumped last year, and if they can do it again this year, if the market is really broken, along with the next big trends for 2024. Stick around after that, we'll do our Monday market update, the stocks I'm watching this week, and the economic news you need to see. First though, if you've ever wondered what's in my portfolio, or want to see the stocks I'm buying, you can now by joining me on the Blossom Social Investing app. It's like Twitter, but for investors and without all the drama. The app was created by YouTuber Brandon Beavis for investors and by investors. I just started using it last year and love the app for the features like getting ideas and sharing my portfolio. And I know, ugh, not another social media app, but this one is more than that. You can connect your brokerage accounts or just input your portfolio to track all your stocks in one place. You're gonna see insights on your portfolio like percentages, average dividend yield across the entire group. You'll also be able to join a community of more than 70,000 investors in their social feed to see what everyone is talking about. Now, I've shared my portfolio on the app. It's totally free to download, so look for the link I'm gonna leave in the description below. Check it out. Back to our main topic, though, because this is so important for 2024 investing. The Magnificent Seven, the biggest tech companies in the world, including, again, Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, NVIDIA, Tesla, and Meta Platforms, surged more than 75% through 2023. What is so surprising and worrying though is that the entire rest of the market, the remaining 493 stocks in the S&P 500 index were up less than 12% over that time. These seven big tech stocks now make up nearly 30% of the market index, and that's never happened before. Even in the dot-com bubble or the concentrated market of the early 80s, the weight of just seven stocks never got above 22% of the index. This is a big problem for two reasons. First is that the S&P 500, that main market index, that benchmark that we all follow, is no longer an index. That means for everyone holding the Vanguard 500 Index ETF, the VOO, or the Spider S&P 500 SPY, or any of the other funds tracking these indexes, you're not getting that safe diversification that you think. We can see here in the funds holding page, it's really just a concentrated bet on those seven stocks with a small 493 stock hedge. It also means if that big tech trend turns against investors, it could crash the market no matter what the rest of the economy or stocks do. Shares of the Magnificent Seven plunged 40% in 2022, erasing $4.7 trillion in shareholder value and forced the market lower. The rest of the S&P 500 only lost 12% that year and could have done a lot better had not investor sentiment tied to those big tech stocks really just dragged everything down. And that concentration problem isn't just in the US indexes with these big tech names really breaking the global indexes as well. The weighting of the Magnificent Seven in the MSCI All Country World Index, an index that is supposed to provide the ultimate in diversification with 85% of the world's investable equities, just these seven stocks alone account for more than all the stocks from the UK, China, France, and Japan combined. So if you're holding that Vanguard Total World Stock Fund, that VT, you're putting nearly 15% of your money in just these seven stocks. Now, a few factors have helped push these big tech companies higher. Uh, the excitement around artificial intelligence has helped a lot of it, with many of these Magnificent Seven directly involved in that development. Peaking interest rates and, and hopes for those rate cuts next year or this year actually also help support those tech growth valuations. Something that has gone unnoticed though is through the snowball effect of this passive ETF investing. More than 600 ETFs include shares of Apple and 337 of those hold shares within the top 15 holdings, meaning for every dollar that goes into these funds, a chunk of that gets invested into Apple. By comparison, only 150 ETFs hold shares of the smallest company in the S&P 500, News Corporation, and just two funds hold it in their top 15 holdings. That means with more investors buying into ETFs, more money is rushing into the magnificent seven stocks. So of course the question is, so what? <laughs> I'd take that 75% return last year versus the 12% return on the other 493 stocks in the index any day of the week, maybe even twice on Sunday. It's not a problem with those big tech stocks can continue to outperform, but 
can they? And those magnificent seven companies certainly have the strength that comes from their brand recognition, economies of scale, and clear competitive advantages, but posting those kinds of gains is going to be very difficult this year. The price to earnings ratio on this year's expected earnings for the group is now at 33 times versus just 21 times PE for the rest of the market. Big tech valuations touched 40 times PE mid 2023. So a higher price multiple wouldn't be impossible, but is extremely high and will require perfection in expected growth. Basically, we're going to need to see a Goldilocks soft landing scenario with a lower inflation along with strong jobs market and consumer spending. We're already seeing one potential bump in the road with a Lawsuits centered on artificial intelligence. It was announced last week that the New York Times is suing Microsoft and OpenAI for using its content to train that AI software. And I would not be surprised at all if this becomes a nationwide civil suit brought by the state's attorneys generals suing the AI developers for using other people's content on the web to train those models, basically causing harm to everyone that's put stuff on the internet because it's being used to train those AI models to replace them. So then if 2024 won't be about the Magnificent Seven, what could be the big ideas that drive stocks. Nobody has a crystal ball here, folks, but I found three themes that could grab headlines. Virtual reality, VR, or augmented reality is likely to take some of the spotlight as Apple releases its Vision Pro headset in January. That could spark an arms race between Apple and Meta, with the two companies trying to grab as much of this VR market share as possible for their headsets. And while the two big tech names will benefit, it's also going to drive software makers like Unity Software, ticker U, and Matterport Inc., ticker MTTR. I've been talking about real estate as a 2024 theme for the past few months, and we've already started to see many of these REITs rebound. Shares of Crown Castle, ticker CCI, are up 32% since highlighting it mid-October. MPW is up 15% from its November low, and even the broader Vanguard REIT ETF, the VNQ, is up 22% in just the last two months. And of course, the idea here is that just as those rising rates destroyed REIT valuations and property cash flows, rate cuts in 2024 are going to support those values, bring those real estate stocks back up. I'm also watching PC sales this year for a major theme. You know, PC and laptop sales typically follow that three or four year cycle. And we're getting to that point where the PC surge during the pandemics were when everybody was upgrading their PC to work from home. So we're getting to that point where that wave of purchases is going to need to be replaced. And that could drive hard hardware makers like Western Digital, uh, HP Inc., Pure Storage, and even Intel. Now on to some of the stocks I'm watching this week. Walgreens Boots Alliance, ticker WBA, is expected to update investors on its plan to separate from that Boots pharmacy chain, either through a sale or an IPO on the market, when it reports earnings on Thursday. Now, this is exactly what I predicted in our early December video, with the shares now up 27% since then. We can see here on the statistics tab on Yahoo Finance, the shares still trade at an attractive valuation, though, at seven times next year's expected earnings, $3.70 a share, or 0.4 times on an enterprise to revenue basis. Now, that EV to revenue valuation is more appropriate for highly indebted companies like WBA here. We can see it does have about $35 billion in long-term debt, though it's still it's going to be able to pay down a lot of that with that boots exit. Uh, and still is solidly cash flow positive. The company's operating margin of 5.4% is also above competitor CVS, which only has an operating margin of 4%, despite a cheaper valuation on the shares of Walgreens here. So I think this is a very attractive play even after that 27% run. Also watching shares of International Business Machines, ticker IBM, everyone's asking, can Big Blue finally turn it around after the shares have really gone nowhere over more than a decade? I highlighted IBM as one of my favorite dividend stocks for 2024, just in last week's video, really on its 4% yield, but more that on the valuation in the face of AI upside potential. Even after a strong 2023, shares here trade for 18 times this year's expected earnings versus other AI-related names like Microsoft trading closer to 30 times earnings. IBM is a cash flow machine generating over $11 billion a year in free cash flow and has the assets in artificial intelligence to maybe not take the market share leader, but to carve out a share of that growing market and really surprise investors here. Again, on that PC sales theme, watching HP Inc, ticker HPQ, has gone nowhere since getting that pandemic pop in those PC sales back then, but is now a good value territory and could benefit on that PC refresh cycle. The valuation at just nine times trailing earnings on strong operating margin of 8% really beats out its competitor Dell with an 11 times PE valuation, so more expensive for Dell, 
and only a 6% operating margin. So not only is HPQ the cheaper stock, but it's also a better performing company. If we do see that 2024 refresh in PC sales, HP is going to easily beat its current expectations for revenue to only grow at 2.6% as well as its earnings targets. Showing you that big picture here with the sector tracker here on sectorspiders.com, we can see over the last week, eight of the 11 stock sectors did close higher with what appeared to be kind of end of year repositioning into the laggards while selling some of the winners. The year's biggest losers, utilities, real estate companies, and consumer staples all outperformed last week as investors continued to bet those interest rate cuts next this year are going to reverse some of the pain felt last year. While the sector winners here, technology and communication services, both closed positive, both sectors were up better than 51% on the year and suffered from the profit taking last week. Energy stocks also continued to sell off on the weaker oil prices and fear that that booming supply, especially here in the U.S., is going to overtake demand in 2024. Zooming out to the one-year picture, we can see that energy stocks were the second worst performers last year, down 4% on the year, but are at a point where investors, I think, can be confident in repositioning for the next few years. Looking at some of the charts here on FactSet Earnings Insight, the percentage of buy, hold, and sell ratings from analysts for companies in the S&P 500 buy sector, nearly two-thirds, 64% of the companies in the energy sector have a buy rating from analysts. It's versus just 33% on hold and 3% sell ratings. That is the best rated sector among analysts. Here in the earnings growth buy sector, we can see that stocks in the sector saw the worst earnings growth with a decline of 29% in EPS last year. That would be 29% lower earnings for the energy sector. Only three sectors last year had a negative earnings growth. Healthcare, negative 21%. Materials down 23%. And then that energy down 29%. And here revenue was also down 15%. 15%, also the worst among all 11 sectors in the S&P 500. But this is where we get into the potential upside for energy stocks this year, because this year isn't expected to be any better, with earnings forecast up just 2.9% and revenue just 1.9% higher. But I think it's an easy beat if, and that's the big question here, all these ifs. One, the downside, oil production is booming, especially here in the United States. So supply could very well overwhelm that demand in an economic slowdown scenario. But on the other side of that, geopolitical risks are what's really keeping the prices higher right now with the threat that the eighth largest producer, Iran, with its 3 million barrels a day, could escalate things into a war in the Gulf. Russia is still trying to work around its sanctions for its 9.5 million barrels per day, but Overall, the oil market is fairly oversupplied, even as OPEC attempts to keep its members to production limits. Risks aside, though, the sector is still the cheapest with stocks under 11 times expected earnings, a discount of 30% to the 10-year average. We can see here the current P.E. ratios for each of the sectors. Here in blue, the green is that 10-year average return, and you can see here energy stocks very much at a discount versus that long-term average. With nobody expecting earnings or revenue to go anywhere this year, and that $71 a barrel right now is close to major support around $65 a barrel. I think the upside potential here outweighs the downside risk. Investors can start repositioning in strong dividend names like Devon Energy, that's ticker DVN, Chevron, CVX, and Diamondback Energy, ticker FANG, enjoying those cash flows until the prices rebound. Join me on the Blossom Social Investing Network and see the stocks in my portfolio with the link in the description below. Or click on the video to the right for my complete 2024 investing plan, which sectors I'm watching, and the 10 stocks I'm buying right now. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.